Continuing with the comprehensive case, this is the final restoration, what you're going to see after the third part of this series. So the patient returns after three months of healing with the provisional in place. I'm going to anesthetize the area, remove the provisional, came off in two pieces. Now she lost her provisional bridge a time or two. And so the second time we cemented the provisional bridge with Duraline permanent cement. And so it's a little more trouble to clean off than a provisional cement, but it is cleanable. You can clean it off. Why Duraline? It's not as strong as say zinc phosphate or a composite cement. So you can clean it off, but you'll need to anesthetize the teeth to clean it off. So that's what we're doing here is cleaning off the Duralon. Then I'm going to come back and pumice with pumice and water. Just a little refinement of the preparations with a fine football diamond. Just a little refinement because you know the tissue is going to have shifted here just a bit. So these are the final preparations and this is following three months of healing after preserving this, after extracting the maxillary first molar and then preserving the socket with a combination of platelet-rich fibrin mixed with freeze-dried bone, and then a resorbable membrane, collagen membrane on top of that. So you've got a nice gingival ponic receptor site here. So I'm placing cord following repreparation, and then this is Luxabite blockout material. When you're using polyether, you probably want to block out the undercuts and the, any little black holes in the teeth, or it's a lot harder to remove. Now this is the blockout material on the facial and the palatal. Custom tray with polyether. Now remember, anytime you're using polyether or uh, polyvinyl siloxane as an impression material, you must have a custom tray. If you don't use a custom tray, there's too much unset material. There's too much volume of material and you're going to get voids, air bubbles, spurs on the model. So it's very important you use a custom tray which limits the volume of unset material and it forces it down into the sulcus. You can refer to the link in Dentistry Master Classes on how to fabricate a custom polyether tray and take an ideal uh, polyether impression with custom tray. Now before I put it to place, you want to wet those teeth as wet as you can. That's one of the things I like about polyether. It's hydrophilic. It likes water. Polyvinyl siloxane is hydrophobic. It doesn't like water. So the teeth are soppy wet and then push this to place and that custom tray is just going to force that unset polyether material into the sulcus and create a capture a beautiful margin. Then after five minutes you remove the tray straight down. Look at how beautiful these margins are deadly accurate. Then I'm going to chase that with a reversible hydrocolloid impression. I always take two impressions. Look how crisp those margins are. If you want to use a scanned uh, impression, that's fine. I've just, I've done them both and I prefer the polyether with custom tray and the reversible hydrocolloid and my laboratory technician prefers these too. So then I'm going to take an occlusal registration record and you place this only between the prep teeth. You don't place it around the whole arch. You only place it between the teeth that have been prepared and let that set. Then it's very important that you trim the wings so that this is virtually flat. If you've got the big wings, the teeth, the stone model won't set, won't move completely into these slots and the bite will be a little bit open. So you want it to be cut almost flat and you want to wet the occlusal registration material before you place the model into the material so it, it seats completely on the articulator. You see I've cut it back. Just the cuss tips are in the occlusal registration material. All right, I'm wiping the teeth with tubelicid red just to clean them real well and it's also, it also is a desensitizer, and then I'm replacing the provisional bridge. And this time it will only be present for about a month, three weeks to a month, while the final bridge is fabricated. It's very important that you wait till you have initial set 
of the provisional cement, just like you want to wait for initial set of Crown and Bridge cement or porcelain uh, or veneer cement. And then you want to chip it off. You don't want to wipe it off. So you don't create a microvoid between the provisional or the crown or the veneer and the tooth from suck back. Then I'm going to take a photograph of a shade tab or a custom shade tab adjacent to the natural teeth and the technician can see the difference between, say, a B1 tab and the teeth. Now, if it's an anterior tooth, I'm going to make a custom shade tab from composite. You can refer again to the videos in uh, dentistrymasterclasses.com to see how to do that. This is not so critical in the posterior of the mouth. So here's the provisional back in place, and that's part two of this series, and that's the Dental Minute. By signing up for DentistryMasterclasses.com, you get incredible comprehensive cases not seen in Dental Minute videos. You get an organized library of all the Dental Minute videos plus these incredible comprehensive cases found only at DentistryMasterclasses.com for your reference and study. And you get before and after pictures of Dr. Cutver's fully restored cases. Guess what? It's only $15 a month for this entire deal. This package deal of all of these comprehensive cases for your use, for your study, to take your practice to the next level, $15 a month. You're not going to want to miss this deal, so sign up today at DentistryMasterclasses.com.